que ceux qui rêvent concernent ceux qui ne rêvent pas. Et pourquoi ça les concerne Parce que, parce que dès qu'il y a rêve de l'autre, il y a danger. À savoir que le rêve des gens est toujours un rêve dévorant qui risque de nous engloutir. Et que, que les autres rêves, c'est très dangereux et que le rêve est une terrible volonté de puissance, et que chacun de nous est plus ou moins victime du rêve des autres. Méfiez-vous du rêve de l'autre, parce que si vous êtes pris dans le rêve de l'autre, vous êtes foutu. Uh, my name is Alex Kenji, and I am 26 years old, from Los Angeles, California, and I am a stuntman. Uh, my name is Georgina Rawlings and I'm 27 years old. I was born in London and now I live in Los Angeles, California and I work as a stunt woman and an actress. Hi, my name is Wyatt Cornell. I'm 18 years old. I gr grew up in Agora, California. I work at uh, Universal Waterworld. They do stunts there. Uh, my name is Zach Bartholomew. I'm 24 years old. Originally born in Anchorage, Alaska. Biggest motivation to become a stand man? Mm. I would say uh, to create great action that can tell a story. Between my grandfather, George Leach, and my father, Vic Armstrong, they worked on every single James Bond movie until their final one was Die Another Day. So they've done a lot of cool roles. My dad was also Indiana Jones' stunt double and Superman's stunt double. So for me, he really is like the real life superhero. There's a lot of pain in hitting the ground, but I mean, everyone has their, their own job that they're into, and this is something that I'm really into, and it's been in my blood forever. Hitting the ground for money is, is a good thing. Yeah, I only do stunts on safe places. Did you say that for the camera? Oh. Yeah, I did say that just for the camera. <laughs> <laughs> People look at Hollywood, big name actors who make lots of money, who travel the world, who, you know, a lot of things are granted to them because of who they are. But when you're watching a movie and they're doing a scene out in the desert, you don't realize it's 105, 110 degrees out there. You're you're in this big heavy suit, sweating profusely, and, and having to bring your energy level up time after time after time to, to perform this stunt, to perform in this scene. You know, that's the real glamour of Hollywood. I've been doubling Scarlett Johansson, whom I'm doubling right now, as the Black Widow in uh, Captain America 2 and I doubled her on the Avengers as the Black Widow and Iron Man 2 as the Black Widow. So we kind of created the character together uh, from the beginning. Oh, this? No, I mean, it's, it's more just frustration that you, you got injured um, when you're injured and you kind of don't want anyone to know that you're injured because that's sort of a, a thing. You don't want to let the whole world know, oh, I'm hurt right now. So you, you know, <laughs> kind of try to take the attention away. Une voix parle de quelque chose. En même temps, on nous fait voir autre chose. Et enfin, ce dont on nous parle est sous ce qu'on nous fait voir. Well, Dark Knight was was uh, really stands out for me because I had that uh, you know, I was fortunate enough to, to be the one to do that truck flip that had never been done before. So that was, that was exciting and it was special and it was, you know, it's, it's kind of, it was a big deal, you know, so it was pretty cool. But uh, the, uh, the logistics of where we did it, which was downtown Chicago uh, on LaSalle Street, uh, the street was only about 60 feet wide 
U.S. Treasury building on one side and the Chicago Board of Trade on the other side. So when the truck went over, if it had gone either direction, instead of straight over, it would have went through one of those buildings. Caused a lot of damage and, and uh, would have been not a good thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it really went over. It blew it all the way off the ground and came over and did a little double slapper. And, you know, I was kind of wandered around for about 20 minutes. Wasn't quite sure where I was at <laughs> when it was over with, but it worked really well. And uh, they were very happy with it. And obviously it made it into the movie. <laughs> I actually came in the business, uh, I had a background in rodeo and car racing and different things. So I came in, uh, I started as a cowboy. I came in doing Westerns. Yeah. When I first broke into this business or got into it a hundred years ago, um, it was very, very difficult. It was a real closed knit community of stunt people. And there was maybe 200 people in the world that did it, you know, which made it really a unique um, family to be part of, you know. And you worked a lot because there was, you know, there was X amount of movies being shot and there was X amount of TV shows being made and there was only a handful of people that did this. So you kept each other working, you know, and you just, you, you worked a lot. Uh, as the the business evolved and, and the um, I guess the the word got out about Hollywood stuntmen, you know, uh, movies like Hooper and TV shows like Fall Guy, which I worked on both. Um, you know, as these movies and TV shows about stunt people started coming out, then everybody that's ever done a backflip on a trampoline wanted to come to Hollywood and be a stuntman. You know, everybody thought John Wayne did those stunts, you know. Everybody thought Humphrey Bogart did those stunts, you know. And that was great. We wanted them to think that, you know. We were more than happy to be in the background, collect our paycheck, you know, make a good living, and go home. No breaks! <laughs> on nous parle de quelque chose et on nous fait voir autre chose. Ça, c'est une idée cinématographique. Je voudrais moi aussi poser des questions et en poser à vous et en poser à, à moi-même. Ce, euh, ce serait du genre, euh, qu'est-ce que vous faites au juste, vous qui faites du cinéma So, we're going to try this. Perfect. <laughs> nothing, nothing to it. Wow. It's not a secure job because you go to work day to day or week to week. If you're, you, you work on a daily contract, you work on a weekly contract, there, there's no guarantees within our industry. So you're, you're always looking for your next job, and, and that's within the whole movie industry, whether you're, you're behind camera, in front of camera, you're always looking toward that next job, finishing this project, moving on to the next project. And from the stunt department side, there's always a line of people behind you that if you got hurt, they're gonna take the clothes off of you, they're gonna put them on somebody else, and they're going to continue filming. It's why we're hired, because if it wasn't dangerous, they, they would have the actors do it. And, and I've had friends that 
became very bitter to, to the movie industry because once they got hurt, the industry sort of forgot about them. The industry kept moving on and they were left behind. Personally, when I'm behind the wheel crashing something or sliding around a corner, I could care less how high-tech that camera is or how high-tech that ed editor is going to be. I'm just earning my bucks, having a good time, smelling that burning rubber and screeching those tires, knowing I'm going to get a big check at the end of the week. So what happens after that, that's up to them. I'm just having a good time. Am I passionate about cars? Well, you know what? This, that's a strange situation, at least with me. Now, when I was young, if somebody had a really hot 57 Chevy or a 62 Chevy, I, I would wish I could have that car. You know, I, I, I you know, dreamt of owning a car like that. But then as I went into my film career, they said, you gotta, you got to wreck this 57 Chevy and flip it over and destroy it. And this car is basically in pristine shape. Now, there's the same car that when I was a kid I would have died for. Now I'm putting a roll bar in it and I'm going to go out and destroy it and destroy it with passion and, and, and love and, and just love the fact that I wrecked this car. So does that make sense? No, it makes no sense whatsoever. I was in Chicago working on a show and it was hot and it was humid and, and we're, we're dressed like cops and we've got the cop uniform on and the bulletproof vest and the gun belts and all the stuff and the hat and and you know we had just finished a scene and we're getting ready to do another one and they're moving the cars around and and one of my buddies goes over and pulls my car up for me and I went to get a drink of water and I, and they go, hey, okay, all the stunt guys, back to your cars. And I get back to my car, and I start it up. And we have to keep our windows up because there's a helicopter in the sky, and you know, and they don't want all the debris and crap blowing around in, inside the vehicles. So windows up, and I start my car, and the heater's turned on high. And I reach to turn off the heater, and all the knobs are missing. Somebody had, you know, one of my stunt buddies had cranked up the heater turned the fan up all the way and pulled all the knobs off so I couldn't shut it off. So now for the next five or 10 minutes, I'm driving around in the middle of summer and it's, it's like 98 degrees and it's 102 humidity and the heater's on full blast. And I'm in all, you know, it's just, it's just, and there, there's all sorts of things. It's like, uh, if they have the trunk, you know, on your, your, you have your car lock and your, and your trunk opener on the key fab or key fob to your car. Uh, we would take the, those out and when somebody, take it off the key ring to the car. So uh, when the other stuntman gets in his car, he starts it up, I'll have the key fob and I'll open the trunk to his car. Now he's got to get out of his car to close the trunk. You know, so he gets back in, I'll open it again. You know, and it's just, stop, you know, now the stunt coordinator, because we don't always tell the stunt coordinator, sometimes they're in on it and sometimes they're not, you know. He's starting to get a little hot and a little heated. I says, come on, we're ready to go, guys. Stop screwing around. He says, I'm not doing it. And he says, what do you mean you're not, you're not doing it? Well, you're on your own, buddy. You started messing with the old man, so I'm going to start messing with you. So paybacks are once again a bitch. Yes, it's all planned out, but it also takes that certain mindset that I'm going to do this and I'm not going to chicken out halfway through it. I'm going to see this through. Some people would say people like that must not be all there. And, uh, that, that may be true, but it's, uh, it, it takes a certain personality to, to do this for a living. You get to your 40s, you got all this experience, and you're still in physical shape to where you knock yourself around good. But then that starts to go downhill to where the confidence and the cockiness is still there, but the body's not. So sooner or later, you got to draw the line and go, how many more of these big wrecks can I do and, and, and still walk away without a cane or a, you know, a walker or something after I'm done, right? Uh. 
I broke my leg completely off uh, jumping a motorcycle. Uh, that wasn't even on a show, it was just practicing for one. And uh, um, uh, that was a pretty serious injury. Uh, Ashley could have and probably should have lost my leg, but uh, didn't. I did a big car crash when I was 58 um, on a show called Paycheck. And I sailed, I did, I plowed into this bulldozer blade at 70 miles an hour. The car flipped end over end twice in midair, came down on its nose, bounced up, rolled over this way, the other way, three, four times. And I'm in there just getting the, the crap knocked out of me. And I got out of that car and there, everybody's cheering and yelling, oh man, that was the most violent, awful looking wreck I've ever seen, that was great. And I just said to myself, Rick, you're 58 years old, what's the deal? I was supposed to be in a cast for six months and <clears throat> about four and a half months into it, I got a call to go to work and so I got a hammer and I went out in the garage and I broke the cast off my leg. and. <laughs> And I went to work, and as luck would have it, they wanted me to run along. I was on a movie or a TV show called BJ and the Bear, and they wanted they wanted me to run along next to the truck, and then have Greg Evigan, the actor, was supposed to bulldog me out of the truck, from the truck to the ground. Right? Well, I was all good, but I couldn't run. <laughs> so I had pins in my leg and everything else, so I'm limping along. I'm hobbling along, trying to get, stay up with the truck. The director's screaming and hollering, "What's he doing? How come he's limping like that? Why is he ruining my TV show?" And it was it was pretty funny actually. <laughs> Bob Yerkes is a legendary stuntman, circus guy, and a million people from our business, well, there's not really a million people in our business, but, you know, exaggerated number, um, have lived at Bob Yerkes' house, and he's also a, a place to go where professional stunt people go on um, to his backyard and train together and freshen their skills and stuff. So meeting him was pretty awesome and gave me a place to stay. And, that was where I really started learning how to meet people in L.A. And, and do what I needed to do. He toured all over the world. He had his own circus, and that was his background. And, and um, you know, the movies with Tony Curtis and doubled Arnold Schwarzenegger, and, 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 and so on and so on. So this guy is an other legend, and um, he has a property where he lives, and he has a high fall tower and a trapeze and a big trampoline and pads, and he lets um, stunt performers practice there. So we drove there, and I never forget. He comes out of the house with um, his old bowl of cereal and, and fruit. And, and uh, he said, where, where do you guys stay? And I said, well, we're staying in a hotel, a motel, you know. And I said, well, how much do they charge? And he said, it's $40 a night. And he said, well, don't spend that money. You can stay in one of my trailers. And he has three or four really, really old Airstream motorhome trailers where um, I found out literally several hundred people stayed in there before, you know.
oh, why did I tell anybody I was in that film? It's, oh, it's, if you know ahead, you turn down and say, no, I don't want to work that film. It's so immoral and garbage films. So you get a lot of them. I started tumbling down at Santa Monica, the original Muscle Beach, when I was 11, and then ran away with the circus during an acrobatic act when I was 15, and traveled all over and worked circuses and everything. And I came back home, I was still 15 years old and did my first film with the Duane's Teeterboard Act. Uh, we did a film called Julia Misbehaves. Greer Garson, Walter Pigeon, Cesar Romero, and Elizabeth Taylor. Elizabeth Taylor and I were both 15 at the time. And then out with the circus again, and so stunt work and circus. So my first love was circus, but uh, the money was in film works and stunts. Trampoline, bars, uh, high wire, shot out of a cannon. I was a catcher in the trapeze. They called me Butterfingers. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. When I decided to run away from the circus, I decided to use my body for a living instead of my mind. Good thing I did. The mind's gone. I can still do good somersaults, though. The first time I broke my legs was in France. The name of the movie was Breakout with Charles Bronson. Getting ready for the stunt, the guy said, break a leg, and I broke them both. Next time I broke my leg was on a Roger Rabbit. And the last time was a Tom Selleck movie called Her Alibi. But uh, so much now is just nostalgia, remembering all these things, and somebody will mention a movie, and then I remember what I did on it, and brings it back. It's a great ride. It's it's it's. It's a wonderful life. We, you know, we we don't have to grow up. We get to to run around and play like like kids, you know, uh, in in a big playground. You know, you get sent all over the world to to do silly things and get shot and and die and then get up and change wardrobe and get shot and die again or or dress up in, in different clothes and drive really cool cars and do really great uh, stunts and and get paid lots of money to do it. I mean. What's not to like? And in 10 years, I'll, I'll reflect back on that time and go, wow, it was great, you know, just... And you look at these movies, you know, on cable or on television, and you go, I worked on that. Le rêve des gens est toujours un rêve dévorant qui risque de nous engloutir. Que le rêve est une terrible volonté de puissance. Même quand c'est la plus gracieuse jeune fille, c'est une terrible dévorante. Pas par son âme, mais par ses rêves. Méfiez-vous du rêve de l'autre, parce que si vous êtes pris dans le rêve de l'autre, vous êtes foutu. <rire>